So, let's have a look at our new Soviet apartment. It'll be a quick look. That's just about everything, but we'll go and have a little bit of a closer look. So here's the kitchen. Fine size kitchen. It's got an oven, cooktop, washing machine, like all good Soviets do. Extra bonus of having a microwave. And one of the largest fridges I've seen in the post-Soviet area. And uh, that's our view out in the street. Everything's green now because it's spring. Oh, and almost forgot. Welcome to Kazakhstan. High five. Um, and uh, yeah, we haven't been out here yet. We're just having a quick look around the apartment before we head off for the first time. And that noise you might be able to hear is Travel Cat. Travel Cat Felix is um, enjoying his new country. He's got a passport. And in here is the, the magnificent, luxurious bathroom with a fantastic bathtub and a toilet that doesn't flush if you put toilet paper in it. Apparently that's a um, Soviet thing that you have to know. Uh, I'm not sure what you do to go around it. Suggestion is apparently, instead of flushing toilet paper, you're supposed to put it in the bin. Anyway, I've just had breakfast, so we'll change the subject. And we come out. A little bit of a cupboard here. And uh, this is what they call a one room apartment. Now, one room apartment means there is no bedroom. So you're actually couch surfing. Um, it would be like a lounge lizard, as we call it. But we've got a fully luxurious office. And, uh, oh, there we go. We've got a swanning around video playing on the computer, which is uh, always appropriate. <laughs> and this is the Soviet park area that's at the foot of our Soviet apartment block area okay so darling here we are at this big big public park and that's the entrance to it very uh, almost Greek like with the big urns and everything so I can't uh, speak or read any of their wordage can you tell me what this park is called? Well, in Kazakh language, it's called uh, Kazakhstan Republika Sinin Kingfish Presidenti Sayabafi. So, and I've just noticed there is exactly the same uh, um, wording in, on the other side for the convenience of Russian speaking people that tells us what the name of the park is which is Park Pyrrho President of Republiki Kazakhstan. That means in English, the Park of the First President of Kazakhstan. Okay, and do you know who the first president was? Uh, yeah, the first president was uh, Nusultan Nazarbayev. So I'm assuming the original name would be Nazarbayev Park. Right now we are standing in front of the two, two large apples. And the reason they're there is because the city is called Alma Ata. Alma in Kazakh language means apple. Ata is father. So uh, that city is uh, um, called like dad's apples. Or dad's apples. So which is um, which is why we've got those large apples in there. And is there any truth? in the thought that the, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Uh, yeah, well, if you get this many big apples, that would definitely keep you away from the doctors forever, right? Okay, now, I'm looking at them, and to me, they look like cherries. Have you got any thought on that? There are lots of different apples, um, and for the cherries, it's very, very big size. What kind of apples are these? Well, there's so many different apples. Um, well, a pot, maybe a pot. A pot. A pot All is right. the largest apple you can get, at the size of uh, of, a, 
20 centimeters in diameter. All right, well, I suspect they're delicious apples. Now, the only way we're going to sort out this controversy is if we go and taste them. Definitely not delicious. And for me so far, the most amazing sight here, and unfortunately, you just can't see it on the cameras because it's a wide angle lens, but the mountains in the background are absolutely amazing. It looks like there's someone's dropped down a huge canvas and then someone else has come along and painted them. They just don't look real, but they're right there and they're massive. And this part of the park has absolutely amazing fountains, but uh, none of them are turned on yet. I mean, it's April, um, so certainly spring, and it's late April. You would have thought, or I would have hoped, that they would have turned on their water features by now. But if I can't watch the splashing water, maybe I can go over and look at the young ones do their uh, cultural dancing. Okay, so there's uh, some dancing stuff going on here. Not real sure if it's got any significance. Um, I'm not going to get too close because if we can hear the music. I know I'll have to uh, block it out, which will kind of spoil the whole whole event. Got to block it out because YouTube um, claims copyright for all kinds of music, whether it's copywritten or not. Yeah, now as I said, I'm not sure if this is uh, cultural. That's an interesting little box. Um, obviously different to what we're used to. That's that's the box I keep their police in. I guess if you need a police officer, you just break the glass and uh, help is on its way. But unfortunately, by the looks of that, someone's already taken this police officer. Okay, so behind me is another statue. I've seen a few statues. I'm very familiar with Lennon. I know some of the Lennon stuff he said. But this fellow's new to me. Can you tell me who he is? That is a, Nusultan, a statue of Nusultan Nazarbayev. He was the first president of Kazakhstan. And he was in power for about 20 years, probably a little bit longer, yeah, long time. So like in every city of the world, it's a, a certain amount of maintenance, and when you have maintenance, you have to uh, dig up things and make holes and um, you can see there we've got a safety barrier there to prevent any injury by going near the bucket on that uh, front end loader but um, just a cautionary tale don't come home drunk tonight 
but um, yeah, it's a good thing that there's not a lot of alcohol sales here. So um, yeah, maybe I was a bit unfair criticising that uh, open hole. I mean, there's another hole here. They obviously have to make the holes, but as you can see, they've made a big effort to uh, to warn people not to fall in it. Now I'm not sure what's going on with this one here. It could be a rescue operation, or it could be uh, could be some workers. So this is a natural river further up, but when it gets through into the city, they've um, used a lot of concrete. The river flows beautifully and they've been able to use the space, which was probably all washed out and, um, as natural rivers are, and turn it into a public space where people can use it. It's pretty much like a very long, beautiful park. Okay, so while we're here, we thought we might just pop into the Mega Mall. And that way we can just have a look and see how that compares to what we used to back in Australia. Already we're being greeted by a wreath of flowers. And as you can see, the malls in Kazakhstan, in Almaty, are pretty much exactly the same as what you'd expect in Australia, or anywhere else in the West for that matter. So, uh, yeah, very civilised. Probably very expensive. And that's not the only shark we've come across in this shopping centre. We just went into a brand store called Under Armour, which uh, Elena tells me is a well-known international brand and she knows the prices of things in Australia. Uh, we calculated the price of a pair of leggings. That she believes the most expensive ones she's found in Australia are $80 in Under Armour. Here, they're $210. Made a new friend in the supermarket. Almaty is a very large spread out city, well in comparison to Bishkek where we've been spending most of our time lately and um, because it's so spread out it's been difficult for us to find the centre so we're going to go in and experience the centre of the city so we've travelled around, we've travelled on a bus to get here in this area we've said this is the city square we've got off but the sky is threatening a bit of rain so I thought we'll just come and have a look for some shelter and uh, we found this place here, Steakhouse, can't quite see the name of it, and uh, we didn't want to order any food because we've had lunch and we're not really hungry. But uh, when we sat down to have a drink just to keep out of what looked like rain, um, we discovered that the menu was just too difficult to pass up. It's not cheap, it's not super expensive, but uh, it's you know, Australian prices, but um, yeah, we're going to sit here and the rain seems to have passed anyway, but it's too late now. Our wonderful waiter reliably tells us that this is the monument in relation to independence. I can't read any of the inscription there, but it's a lady there with two doves symbolising freedom. And the date down the bottom of 1986. Well, I would have imagined independence came in 1991, so I'm not sure what happened in 86. I know there was some kind of a people's revolt, but I'm not sure of the history of it. If you know, and somebody does, how about commenting and telling me? For many years, Almaty was the capital of Kazakhstan. We've come across this magnificent building, We've been able to establish that it is a 
government building, but beyond that, I'm not really sure what it is now. But its magnificence suggests to me that it may have been significant during the period when Almaty was the capital. And I feel a lot more secure today walking around knowing that the patrol dick is on uh, on duty. Now listen, before you get upset, that's their words, not mine. We think that might be the museum, but if uh, it's not, we'll have to head down the beautiful avenue. We'll find ourselves back in the forest. Okay, darling, so that's all written in Russian. So what is this place that we're just about to go into? That uh, Central uh, Government Museum of Kazakhstan. Sure. It is a magnificent building strewn with many, many marble pieces. It's uh, very nicely built. A big dome for a roof. Lovely building. Wait times can be a bit long on school holidays. So we have here a bronze casting, 7th to 8th century China Tang Dynasty. I can tell you, it does not look comfortable. I don't know if it had any padding when it was originally made, but right now it would not be comfortable. The inside of a ute, the way it should be. Well, certainly could have used that in the winter. Or that. Also nice and warm. Now that's a get up I could see myself in. Good helmet there, I could wear that on the back of the, on the Harley. A couple of swords for in traffic issues. And even got a couple of. Um, Particular seats for the Harley. I'm not comfortable with the ones that I've got. And a quick look at some of the local fashions. This set up here I found very interesting. I was asking Elena if uh, I might get some more attention if I was dressed like that, and she said no. So apparently, it doesn't matter what gear I wear, I'm still not going to be of any interest. Oh, Sputnik is a little bit low in the sky today. And that was the Kazakhstan Museum. I know there are other, other museums. I know there's one in particular that uh, has some mammoth remains, but I thought that might have been it, but that's not it. That was really all uh, mainly to do with um, Kazakhstan, Kazakh people's history. Uh, they've been here for about a thousand years when they rode in from the Mongols. Help us grow, like, share and subscribe. Darling, I'm a little bit concerned about one of the main dishes. Peasant cutlets. Now, I know horse meat's eaten here, but really, should they be eating peasants? This man's name is Pon Philip. He organized a resistance against the Nazis during the Second World War and the 28 heroes attached to his unit uh, are honored by having parks named for them. Um, this is the park in Kazakhstan. We've already been to the Pond Philip Park in Kyrgyzstan. Now, I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but he's also famous for, now will be famous, for only being the third person in history to have a Hitler mustache. So it's him, Hitler, and Charlie Chaplin. He's a squirrel.
we've been a bit unlucky with the weather in our matty. I've uh, been holding off, hoping that we get a sunny day. It's not raining today, but it's not the nicest day. It's overcast. Because we want to go and see the Botanic Garden in all its beauty. But unfortunately, we've had poor weather. We're running out of time, so we're just going to go anyway. I've been fascinated by this business behind us. It's some sort of a market. According to the name of it, it's a shagging market. highlight of the botanical gardens turns out not to be much to do with anything botanical. It turns out that I'm not the only one, Helena and I are not the only ones that are swatting around today. Okay, well as it turns out, um, these botanical gardens here, we had to pay to get in, I'm not sure how much, I don't think it was very much, but um, it's a little bit intriguing for me because we've been to the first President's Park, which has cost you nothing to go in, and it's quite a nice park. Uh, this botanical gardens, correct me if I'm wrong, but I expected flowers at spring, I expected flowers and pretty plants but um, really it's it's a forest walk uh, yes there's trees that have been planted um, very little in the way of flowers um, a tiny little pond with a couple of swans in it but anyway very nice place to go for a walk um, we don't have a lot of time in our Maddie so this will be the end of our video for, for this and I um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, We'll hope you watch for the next video, which will be in a new location.